This is your Libertarian Crusaders podcast show, episode number 19, where we crusade for liberty and for Always. truth and against uh, violence and where we see it. And which brings us to an interesting story that today we have our special guest, M4. 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 And he's going to elucidate his uh, interesting experience with uh, road pirates, right? Mm, yeah. And uh, near Buena Vista, Virginia. It's uh, Buena Vista. Come on, you got to do it from the <laughs> Buena, <laughs> Buena Vista. Buena Vista. I mean, you listen to the video, it's, uh, it's definitely Buena. So. Buena. Uh, buena? No. It's, it's, it's Spanish, You're right? It's sound sophisticated. I'm, it's a Spanish no. city, I think. <laughs> it's America. Buena Vista. Anyway, which means like a good view. Yeah, I mean it's a good view <laughs> until you're in the back of the police car. <laughs> so, uh, what were you doing in Buena Vista? And uh, well, actually, so I saw the video. It was a video, like 45 minutes long, about being accosted by cops and violating your rights. It led to a crazy civil court case um, and a lot of things that you can actually hear. It felt like I was watching a like. Like a movie where, like, you can hear them talk about, like, how they're gonna, you know, make up charges to arrest you and yep. gonna uh, drag you out of there, um, e even from their own perspective. And then, like, seeing it from you, kind of watching from afar, was kind of a good treat for you to kind of put the whole video together. Um, but where were you coming from? Well, I was. Uh, I've been contracted to deliver auto parts for the advanced autos, but basically, I didn't work for them. I was, like I said, a contractor, so. I would just drive around in my own car and that way I could bring my dog with me and could, instead of leaving him at home all day and we just drive from Salem and go to Buena Vista then Lexington and all the way to Covington back to Salem. I do that loop like twice a day so I'd be in the car like 10 hours a day just driving around and dropping off auto parts and listening to music you know doing my thing and one day road pirates. Local mu municipal tyrants, I've also heard them called. Yeah. <laughs> That's Freedom a nice way of putting it. <laughs> what did they pull you over? Yep. Uh, four day expired inspection sticker. I was just, uh, you know, working so much I didn't have time. I mean, I had five days a week. And by the time I was done, it was after five o'clock. So, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. I figured if I got pulled over, it just, you know, hey, fix this ticket, whatever. But, uh, so all that went. I think it's uh, we're like yeah. Some of these places like to trying to get your registration is like nine to five, banking hours are nine to five, post office nine to five. It's like when people have to work nine to five jobs, mm -hmm. like they don't really have time to go to any of these kind of places to kind of get their affairs in order or uh, to do these sort of things. Um, businesses will like stay open till nine o'clock, or really they can, right? Yeah. Uh, government agencies always nine to five. Yeah. yeah. If that, Sorry, can't get there. Four thirty. Four thirty. Right. And if you come in at lunch, you better wait. Right. That's so the question that everyone wants to ask, though, uh, did your car pass inspection, and what was or what was the outcome of that? Um, well, <laughs> drum roll. The uh, passenger's door was given issues. Basically, the. I wonder why. Yeah. Well, the car is actually pretty sound mechanically. It's just like the interior is just falling all to par all to shit and just. Horrible, so the panel actually came off and the little doodad that goes up and down kind of came unlatched, so they, they failed me for that, and then I just like went in there and put it back together and it worked and it was fine. I mean, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. I wasn't driving around in a dangerous vehicle that was gonna you know, blow up and destroy Because you're trusting this thing to take you from Salem to all over yeah, 10 I mean, hours a day. It's a diesel, it's a, it's a pretty dependable car. It has about 340,000 miles on it, keeps going, so. Wow. But that's it's coming apart on the inside. I, <laughs> I think it was very smart to kind of record. Oh yeah. Uh, on your end, mm -hmm. uh, did that help tremendously in court? Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing is, uh, I had my my version of it, but I also I filed a discovery request with the um, Commonwealth attorney, and they uh, they didn't respond to me. So I actually called him up and was like, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm trying to get that body cam." And he's, he kind of went through the motion. He didn't even look at it. It was like three weeks later, he hadn't even looked at it. He's like looking at, looking at it over the phone, and he's like, uh, you know, who, who's your uh, client? And he thought like I was an attorney. I'm just like, no, nah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get that body cam, man. Surprise. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, they're not used to anybody trying to advocate on their own behalf. Yeah. They're, everybody defers to experts nowadays. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. They say that uh, if you're defending yourself, you're an idiot or whatever the saying is. That person that's... It's a big jobs it, program. Really, as an though. idiot for a lawyer or something like that. And, but I mean, the way I figured is like, all right, so we got district court. Say I do go in there and I get my ass handed to me. I can always appeal. So I got a freebie right there. If I appeal, then I go to circuit court. And if I go to circuit court, I can then hire a lawyer if I really wanted to. Or I can get a jury of my peers and just show them that video and be like, hey, do you guys think this is right? I mean, maybe go the jury nullification route, something like that. Even if I did violate their law, was it a just law? Was it right? I mean, I don't think so. And I mean, after all the research I did, I didn't violate their law. So, so can you go uh, step by step by you, you're getting pulled over. Mm -hmm. uh, they ask you to uh, step out of the vehicle, um, which I think you did pretty good in uh, locking your car doors. Nobody thinks about that, right? When they say, hey, I need you to step out of your vehicle, sure. And you just lock the car door behind you, right? I rolled the window up, too, just to forget. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one second. You know, I, I'm not a, a meteorologist. I don't know when it's going to rain and, you know, yeah. how long I'm going to be here for. Uh, you stood out uh, with your dog, and uh, after that? Well, I just uh, was recording, set back. I mean, I was like, can I speak to a supervisor? I talked to the uh, lieutenant. He was, uh, he just kind of told me, you know, well, oh, Virginia case law allows us to let our dog sit on a leash, and all of a sudden we have this magical authority to go in your car, so. That was one of the most overweight police officers <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> It looked like was, the Michelin man coming through. I was giving him hell, but I mean, in person, it's like, all right, everybody's like, hey, why don't you tell them all this stuff? Why don't you run your mouth? Well, for one, when it comes down to it, you want you want to look good in front of the judge or the jury or whoever. So right. keep it cool and then, you know, talk all the shit you want later. I was like, you got free speech. So in this wonderful thing called the Internet, and since it's such a small town, when I posted the video, it, I mean, it's spread in the area quick. I mean probably like five six thousand views in the first 24 hours like oh but those are all local views and the city of buena vista itself has like six thousand people and it kind of went stagnant for a little while and then one of these bigger youtube channels kind of picked it up uh i can't say the name right it's like armus Geddon press or something but they picked it up and then it really took off shot up 60 70 thousand and then high impact flicks uh one of my favorite youtube channels that dude's awesome he uh he, he did a little commentary on it, and I like that. And then actually here recently, Audit the Audit. I don't know if y'all seen that one. He, uh, he audits police interactions. They, he just did a video on it. But total, I'm, I think I'm about 200,000 views getting there. So, well, yeah. Good exposure, especially here in Virginia. Um, yeah. I was just kind of looking up like weird stuff in Virginia, Virginia laws. Um, like you can't have uh, radar detectors here in Virginia. Right. It's like the only state. It's the only state, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's not a big deal because now they use uh, laser detectors, mm -hmm. which is uh, like a light gun. LIDAR. Yeah. That's a lot of them still name. use radar uh, guns, but mm -hmm. in cities, I think it's easier to pinpoint which car it was with a laser. So like, for instance, in Northern Virginia, I think you're more likely to find laser, whereas just on a major yeah. highway, the state police will be using radar. Not, not that I have any reason right. to know yeah. that or anything, yeah. but... You don't want to be that guy in New York where you talk about illegal stuff and then you have uh, someone red flagging you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't red flag my radar detector. Man. Virginia might be next with that magazine ban. We'll see. We've got rounds. a lot of um, sanctuary Second Amendment counties that's, rising that's up. That's a joke, but yeah. yeah. I don't it's, know. We'll it's see. a symbolic <laughs> gesture. But. It's a good symbolic gesture, and all it takes is somebody to, like, did you see what happened like to that guy? And he had a good squadron meeting up like right next to his house. They met at a cemetery before they got swatted. His Boogaloo crew. Yeah. yeah. So like, I think Virginia has a lot more guns than New York. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I think, very glad. I think then it would only take somebody to say, hey, Virginians, uh, six Semper Tyrannus, mm -hmm. uh, Boogaloo time, you'll have like 10 times that number just coming by and making it worse. I mean, you'll, you'll have a Bundy Ranch incident where the cops yeah. like, all right, let's back off. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is you got to put them in their place sometimes. Isn't it a symbolic gesture when they have buybacks and nobody shows up or people yeah. make guns and be like, oh, thanks oh, yeah. for the gift Just card. Just report them on Facebook for selling guns. <laughs> <laughs> guns. I think you did a good job 
putting them into place in a very uh, good and controlled way mm-hmm. about it. A lot of people get so nervous when the cops get there, but you're very good and uh, calculable and saying like, uh, hey, uh, do you mind if I, what, what do you say, do you mind if I search your car? And you're like, no, I'm making sure I don't have consent. I'm making mm-hmm. sure I'm getting stepping out of my car, not of my own volition because right. I'm under duress. Yeah. Um, hey, can we search your trunk? Mm-hmm. Um, no, it was more like, this is what we're going to do. And I was like, well, uh, do you, don't you need consent for that? No, not to run my dog around your car. Okay, well, you know, I don't agree with this, but I'm just kind of shining a light on how government works. I mean, really, they're just armed robbers breaking into your vehicle, and I'm just going to stand back and show the world what's really going on. I mean, they're just they're just a bunch of criminals that are backed up by the government, so they're allowed to do whatever they please. And it's unfortunate, but people give them this pass that they don't deserve, and they kind of forget where this whole country founded was like people just think all of a sudden you should just let the, oh let them in your trunk and let them in your it'll be over faster if you just let them in your trunk <laughs> just comply <laughs> yeah i bet you they don't say oh in germany you should just comply mm-hmm. right but if the jews had just complied it right. would have been over a lot quicker <laughs> if yeah. you only just told him where you were coming from yeah but that's the thing is i, I did it to myself. you ever heard of that place <laughs> yeah. that was all me i did that to myself because you know i chose not to discuss my day with officer hogan <laughs> Sorry, sir. Uh, let me tell you, I'm going to go uh, to my next stop here. And uh, is that okay with you or should I? Yeah. Uh, basically, if you watch the video, as soon as I said, do I have to answer these questions? He's like, no, you don't. Turn around. All right, we need backup. We got one of those uh, sovereign citizen guys that wants to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. He just, he, you could hear him. Like, he's all shaky in his voice. Like, oh, it's like, oh, God, we got one. That's what they do. They Their training videos are like maybe... Uh, there's, not, there's no war on cops. Unless a lot of people think there's a war on cops. There's no war on cops. Uh, what they'll do, though, during training is they'll get all the small incidences in, across the entire country, put them together in a slideshow video. Uh, so they see like 10 of them. So they watch like 10 incidences where a cop gets owned. And, and then they'll say, this can happen any minute, any second. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and these are a lot of a lot of them. You're saying sovereign citizen at the bottom yeah. right corner. Uh, they they did it to me when I was uh, in the military for security forces. So you, like they try to brainwash you, like they could be a potential enemy and a threat uh-huh. everywhere. Um, Boom. And, yeah, Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you had to say. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> You're under arrest. Sovereign citizen. They, always, <laughs> they have like a running tally. Uh, they'll say, well, there's been 37 police officers killed so far in 2019. Wow. And, right. it's and you're just like, accidents. how many like mechanics and accountants have oh, been garbage and killed have more days? Right. <laughs> yeah, lumberjacks. Truck drivers. Yeah, yeah. But there's a war on cops. Watch out. They they rarely pull the weapon. Uh, there's never really been a. There's somebody who, who brought that up, and I was just like, well, here's the percentage. It's like point zero 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 one. You know, it's, it's not mm-hmm. that often. And versus like all the number of law enforcement officers, it's not a prevalent issue. Um, I think I, they get 1,400 dogs a year, though, or better, maybe. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, on their kill count, oh, yeah. right, wow. M- more than burglars, right? <laughs> burglars, I don't think, come and shoot their dog, like, well, I'm not messing with that. Right. <laughs> they don't no, get into food. I've heard of burglars. <laughs> Here's a I've steak. Heard, yeah, Good exactly. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that? They should be at least carrying kibbles and bits, bacon with them when they go to a house. All right, distraction. Arrest. I mean, you can't. The thing is, the reason the reason they pull like can pull a gun and shoot somebody is they have to say that their life is in danger. But you can't show me one example where a dog, I don't care how big it is, has ever killed an officer or anybody. Because I mean, my dog's about seventy five pounds. If you're a full don't full grown adult, you shouldn't have to worry. I mean, the worst case, you might get some stitches or something. You see how their dogs are? They they maul the shit out of you. Well. Yeah, you yeah. but you're not gonna die. <coughs> and dogs, you sit there and just ah. When dogs kill, it's usually children. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're a full grown man. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be a cop if you're with the about armor on most times. Yeah, I and mean, a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I guess in order to be an officer, you need to be kind of a coward. Dog execution I mean, squad. I was kind of worried for your dog for a little bit when I was watching. It's like I was like, cool. Yeah. Right, this is interesting. Like. Oh my God, he's got a dog. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, where's this video going? I know. I was criticized, like, you put your dog in danger, and I have no respect for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He should have just taken the ticket. <laughs> yeah. well, this is why I bring up the dog subject, because a lot of people have more attachment with dogs than they do with humans. Mm-hmm. And when they see a cop kill a human, it's easier for them to disconnect that than yeah. a cop killing a dog. 
Right, they have more precious life on the dog. If it's a police dog, and if you kill the dog, the dog is uh, is just treated as if it was a real police it's officer. It's like a twenty-one gun salute. Twenty-one, that. everything. You yeah. got the whole uh, blockade of uh, traffic. Uh, every, everyone's got to go see this dog. Get it's a dog. Uh, you you get charged as if you killed a human being, right? Yeah. But the reverse isn't true. If they had no. killed your dog, like, eh. and everybody will make every excuse in the world as to why they had to do it, right? That's the thing is everybody wants to. I saw Kojo, through. right? Is it Kojo? Mm. Kujak. Mm. Kujo? Kujo. Kujo, right? Yeah. yeah, Stephen King. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the cop was talking to you and he said something to the effect of, uh, well, I don't know that. I don't know that your dog is, is fine. Yeah, he's, he's an uh, inability he's to friendly. read the dog. I mean, okay, worst case scenario, you get bit. I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, you can cry about it and then call animal control if that's what. But yeah. it's not a huge deal if. Your dog, like, there's nothing a dog is gonna do that's gonna like put your life in danger. It's just they, it's like they're so trigger happy, just ready to like, ready for something to pop off. That's the thing. Nothing ever happens. Crime has been going down unless you live in like Detroit or one of these Mm -hmm. liberal control cities. Uh, Everything is generally kind of peaceful. There's not a lot of crime. Uh, So like, they watch all these movies. They have this uh, weird fantasy to have this adrenaline rush to be like. uh, John Wick in a way and yeah. shooting everybody but nothing of it ever, ever occurs so every time they pull someone over they think like this is it this might be my moment yeah. oh this guy said he won't tell me where he's coming from oh man, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> here they, we go they just they, their idea of respect is different than like if we have respect for each other it's a mutual agreed upon thing that you know we're equals but when it's respect for police officers it's like they're your daddy and you gotta like listen to them and do everything they say that's not respect that's obedience that's a difference between respect and obedience but everybody uses the word respect for what they really mean is obedience when it comes to police officers and i'm not going to obey and i mean if if you want me to do something i'm going to do it under duress so you're going to have to physically either physically force me i won't resist or you're going to have to put me in a position where if I don't do it, I'm going to go to jail, be in handcuffs, blah, blah, blah. So up to that point, I'm just going to, I'm going to comply because I have to, or otherwise who knows what's going to happen. Well, it's not your job to give them everything that they need. Yeah. <clears throat> they uh, have to do some sort of a work. Right. It's like, right. I'm not going to help you do your job and break it into my car. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, know, you got the keys to your house. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if I was legally detained, he could have easily said, give me the keys. And I would have said, like, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to hand them to you. But if you want them, they're in my pocket. I'm not, I'm not taking them. But he didn't even go that far. He just, as soon as I said, um, well... You know, I don't want to. Are you forcing me? He said, oh, he's, he's not going to comply. And I'm going to get my unlock kit. And he, just, he didn't even try to dispel any of my, like, concerns. He just was like, this well, is what I'm going to do. Well, they're not trained in any sort of de-escalation yeah. or mediation or f- relationship building or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like, why wouldn't you? Like, he couldn't ask you a question, but why wouldn't you want me to look in your car? Yeah, and, well, because there's this thing called privacy. And I oh, don't the force want strangers moment, right? going through my shit. <laughs> Actually, I know why. Are. There's a lot of garbage in your car, I saw. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of dog hair and yeah, garbage. Like, like, Man, you got to roll well, that down. And... You're low-hanging fruit, right? I yeah. saw you had a guy fox mask. That is true. <laughs> right. Oh. That would be. Right. I, too, want to overthrow government and install a Catholic <laughs> theocracy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Guilty, Your Honor. <laughs> it's all right. The NSA already knows. It's okay. Um, so they're rifling through. At, where, where do we leave off? They're rifling through your stuff, mm-hmm. right? They've unlocked the car, yeah. And they're just. Can you ma- first off, I can't imagine doing that, going through somebody else's stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. kind. Of, they they should be embarrassed, but they're not. So wh- then, what's going on? So eventually, they try to get the trunk open. Since it's such a glitchy car, the um, trunk release doesn't work. Thankfully, so it all worked out. <laughs> um, so the trunk release didn't work. He uh, he falls down the seat. He tries to get there. There's like a, a radiator box back there because I'm delivering auto parts. And he's like, oh, I can't get back here. What am I going to do? And then they, they put their two brain cells together in the back of my car. And they're like, uh, well, uh, I can't get up there. There's some there's uh, some box and I can't get there. And he's like, well, let's just arrest him for obstruction. And he's like, uh, you think that'll fly? And he's like, uh, well, I mean, he's, he's interfering with our duties, and uh, uh, you want to search him? He's like, well, um, he's not, he's not going to consent to a search of his person. He's like, if we're going to arrest him, then yeah. 
And it's like, well, uh, we'll just tell him to put his dog back here and we'll arrest him for obstruction. So they're sitting in the back just conspiring against me, literally conspiring. Like, how are we going to get this guy? Because he's doing, he's exercising them pesky rights, getting in the way of our tyranny. And we're going to do what we got to do. Rights, what do you need them for? Are you up to something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only rights I care about is Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. No, no. What constitution? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a moment where they come, yeah. like, constitution. Yeah, yeah. you know that, that document you're supposed mm -hmm. to swear uh, oath to? Or, I don't know. There, Never read that. Yeah. <laughs> there was a few sound clips. It was the, I'm not asking for consent, and the, uh, what constitution, and... Will that fly? Those are my three favorites. The uh, U.S. Thing. Constitution. Oh, uh, I don't know if... Then he was like, well, what amendment? I guess is what he meant, like, what amendment. But, man, it was a great little sound clip. Either way, it yeah. made him look stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then you, you had that 4% that just was, like, mad at me. Like, they were trying to find anything they could to get mad at me about, like, you only rolled your window halfway down. That tells the officer right there that you're looking for trouble. And it, you know how some people roll the window like this much? I had yes. mine like that much. And he, they were still complaining. And it's like, all right, I can't, I can't appease some people. Some people were just no matter what. I mean, I, I played it as smooth as I could. I, it's like basically just exercising your rights is going to piss them off no matter how nice you do it and how polite you are. It's still going to piss people off because they think if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to worry about. And it's just this brainwash mentality that a lot of well those type of people i like to ask them how many laws do you think that there are and do you think that you comply with all of them all the time oh, definitely not yeah it's, it's impossible you should try to like limit them enforcing everything that you can it's like mm -hmm. sorry about your luck if you don't see anything obvious get about yeah. your get about your way well that's the thing like with my lawsuit is that they kind of extended the traffic stop some people would disagree that they extended it because what he did is like, have y'all heard of the uh, Rodriguez ruling? So basically with this guy Rodriguez, he, uh, I'm not exactly sure the details of the case, but the decision was basically that they can't extend the traffic stop beyond the scope of uh, a normal traffic stop. So what he did is he had the dog in the back. So he's not allowed to just run the dog instead of writing the ticket. He has to, somebody has to write the ticket while they're running the dog. So he calls backup in to get the, uh, get the um, lieutenant to pretend to start writing this ticket as quickly as he can so he can run his dog because you're not, you're not allowed to postpone the, um, the traffic the stop right. for that. So mm. that was their way around it. But, uh, mm. you know, a lot of people say, well, do they have reasonable suspicion to run the dog? I mean, it's kind of a gray area from what I can tell. I mean, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a, a Supreme Court case guru or anything, but... It seems like they take Supreme Court case law and they manipulate it. Even when it looks bad for them, they'll manipulate it and find ways to like stay within it so they can get around get around uh, actually having to abide by it. It's just like it's color of law versus rule of law. Yeah, I'm looking to the day when these dog sniffing dog stuff is this uh, bogus. And there is a, there is a case where like a woman was able to to do this and I've done it to like hundreds of people and found out that she was faking it the whole time. All those <laughs> cases that yeah. I look back and it's like adjudicate and throw them out of court. Mm -hmm. um, reminds me of like this FBI thing where they said that you can tell who they are by a strand of their hair. It turns out they faked an entire forensic field. That is an entire right. life. Forensics, yeah. Yeah. a lot of it is bullshit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not a real thing. Yeah. I went to school where they, that was a topic that we had to <laughs> learn for a whole week. Uh, and it was all made up. Yeah. <laughs> that, it, there were murders that were, yeah, people were charged right. based on <laughs> hair evidence. On hair. They matched it to their hair. Right. I don't know. Is that kind of like the same? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Guilty? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you were then uh, suing them in civil court. Yeah. How did that turn out? Oh, it turned out great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, I didn't get to take it to like federal court and really. Uh, put it in front of a judge's like a federal judge's nose but you know i was i was offered a settlement that was pretty handsome so i decided to go with the settlement but um yeah i defended myself pro se in court and then after that i was like all right i think i got something here because for one if i'm able to defend myself in court and get it kicked out they're how it's probably bullshit i mean because i wasn't sure because i know that they have like a million ways of getting out of stuff but um i looked up what's called a section or usc 42 section 1983 claim so basically if police are acting under color of law and they violate a clearly established constitutional or statutory right you're allowed to sue them under 
USC 42 section 19A3. And he was acting under color of law because he was a police officer and he was, um, he was going beyond the scope of his duty in order to retaliate on me. It was, re it was obviously a retaliation. So we, uh, we came up with this 30 page complaint with like eight different counts we charged him with. It, you know, it was great being the plaintiff and him being, or actually those two officers were the defendants. And um, we tacked on what was called a Monell claim. So on top of the USC 42 section 1983 claim, the Monell claim allows me to sue the municipality, the city of Buena Vista as well. So I had three people listed as defendants. Yes, people. The city of Buena Vista is a person, according to the law. Hmm. Call it sovereign citizen stuff if you want. <laughs> but a corporation is a a person as well as a municipal corporation, which is the city of Buena Vista. So Wait a minute. You got to see this person? <laughs> Yeah, I was accused by him, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I like to face uh, my accuser if it's the other way around. Sometimes they say, like, the city of Richmond versus, he was like, cool, yeah. um, I like to see my accuser. I was like, all right, what does that person look like? I've never seen this city of Richmond. <laughs> Everybody has to show up, right? Well, that's the thing. It's, that's, I kind of, like, I got my, um, I got my, like, discovery requests and stuff like that. All these, like, all this paperwork and motions I got from Mark Stevens, if y'all know who that nice, is. Nice, good. Yeah, yeah, so I got, I got it from him and, uh, you just watch a bunch of his videos and kind of read up on it. Like, basically, what you're doing is you're just kind of holding their feet to the fire and pointing out stuff like that. Oh, who is this Commonwealth of Virginia? Can can you please show me who that is? Oh, they'll get mad at you, but you know it's just kind of it's kind of fun, honestly. Every time if I get a if I get an inspection sticker of any kind of thing, I'm gonna go to court and I'm gonna fight it and I'm gonna have fun with it. And you know, preferably it's not a misdemeanor or a felony, but. Any little traffic citation or anything, I'm going to just go in there and I'm going to challenge every aspect of the alleged crime because one of the um, elements of the crime would be jurisdiction saying that the law applies to me. Not only did I break the law, but the law applies to me. <clears throat> it's, kind of, that's, it's kind of more Mark's realm, but I, I'm just trying to learn it, it just like kind of get more familiar with it. But a lot of people would dismiss that as old sovereign citizen garbage. I've seen Free man him on the land. I've seen I've him the... work well with that though, with yeah. uh, people who <laughs> owe uh, tax money, mostly with IRS people, mm -hmm. and he just kind of goes to those Socratic questions, yeah. and then he just give up in frustration, and he's like, "All right, we let go of our case." They would just rather, instead of like answering all the motions you file and getting exposed in front of everybody and all these uncomfortable questions about uh, who the who Commonwealth of Virginia is? Well, I have the right to meet my accuser, right? Oh, well, that's the officer here. And it's like, so so who do you work for, uh, Your Honor? Oh, you work for Commonwealth of Virginia as well? And <laughs> the prosecutor, you work for Commonwealth of Virginia? Oh, and the officer? Hmm, how am I supposed to have a fair and meaningful hearing here today if you all work for the same and I'm working here on my own behalf? Oh, you want to give me a public defender? Who does he work for? Right. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, fair guys. and impartial, as they say. Yeah, right? yeah. No. So, I just like to shine a light on these kind of things and well, just keep doing it. And I mean, stay peaceful and just shine a light on what they're doing. It's a, it's a racket. I mean, really. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. It's uh, the the jury nullification is a good route. Is mm -hmm. have expose it to the jury. Be like, look. Is this something that it, you find immoral? And most people will be like, no, you didn't hurt anybody else. You Do didn't. you feel comfortable putting me in a cage for, for not answering questions? Right. For right. not giving my key? Is that, is that something you, should, you want to put me in a cage for? You did really good at the scene when they were asking again for the last time. They're like, are you going to unlock this trunk? And you say, am I being threatened with violence? Yeah. Uh, I'll do it if I've, I'm under duress. If mm -hmm. I, you're threatening with violence, you threaten me with violence, you're ready to get out of the car. Right? Are you doing it again? I didn't do it out of my own volition. I give no consent to this. I think you did really good at uh, explaining that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that you show on the video that people can see that. Yeah. And I think it's a good training video then for a lot of people. They can get involved in something similar in that kind of situation. Yeah, I mean, that's how government works. It's violence and force and comply or else. That's the whole, the whole jurisdiction. It goes back to the whole jurisdiction thing is... The only jurisdiction they have is they're willing to use men with guns to force you into their courtrooms and force you into a cage and force you into their lawyers. And that's exactly what they're doing is they're using force and violence to push everybody in that direction. And we're not, we're not able to do anything except stand back and say, all right, well, I'm, I'm complying, but I don't agree with this. And I'm going to shine a light on it and do the best I can. I mean, why do you think they don't like cameras in courtrooms? <laughs> right. I mean, but it's easier than ever now. 
sneak it in there with yeah. like a pen well, you can have a little camera on there oh yeah and everybody you, has a camera in their pocket usually i've had to do that for a friend and he's like i'm gonna court i'm afraid what they'll do can you record it for me so you like he got this camera pen it's like all right i got it mm-hmm. oh wow and then i could draw too which is cool because you can be like uh <laughs> Yeah, you can draw the judge looking like, Jabba. Yeah. 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 looking like Jabba the Hutt and like, my son was so guilty. <laughs> <laughs> there was this big fat um, uh, sheriff that was there too. I drew him too. It was huge. <laughs> um, that's like a weird thing to kind of see sometimes. Like, dude, how are you going to keep up with yeah. anything, right? Or catching up know. with that. That would be a great way to undermine the police is to gradually pass, pass laws that like restrict the guys who can be on the force and uh you know what they can do like the military is running into this problem uh, they can't recruit anybody because most people don't meet the physical fitness standards Mm -hmm. and people are leaving in droves yeah yeah well they already said that there's an iq standard up somewhere (laughs) in new england that you can't have a certain iq uh, they think you might be too bored of the job, so they kicked out somebody who was a candidate to be a police officer. And maybe they can be the same thing. Like, here's the physical fitness, and you got to do a mile and a half, be low IQ, and right. high fitness. Right. 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 Like, you're off the force, like no pay, no retirement, dude. Sorry. Right. And then you got the guys like huh, criminal. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I suffice it to say, it's fair to say that uh, if they had found anything in your trunk. Mm-hmm. that you would have been screwed you would have been in big trouble oh yeah and they, they would have been like ha see that's why we pulled him over yeah exactly i mean so i was what did you have in concerned oh, I knew it. yeah <laughs> i was really honestly concerned he was going to plan something because he was just he's acting really shady i mean right they'd say i was acting frustrated shady because i didn't want to answer questions but i mean I just don't see why I can't get through their thick skull that people just don't want to talk to them. This is not a consensual conversation. You pulled me over. If you think I did, you think I broke the law or some code or whatever, give me my ticket and I'll be in my way. But otherwise I'm not going to assist you in trying to put me in a cage. So if you, you know, want me to sign that ticket, I will under duress. But other than that, I'm just going to, I'd like to be on my way. That's kind of my position is like, uh, please let me be on my way, sir. And you know, but yeah. I ain't got no time for that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of bored here. This is being a Vista, so. <laughs> got parts to deliver. Get out of right. the way. Yeah, well. So, I mean, this kind of uh, brings up a good uh, challenging point for Elon Musk to maybe design cars that are cop-proof. Yeah. That when you come out of your car and you lock it, it is impenetrable. Right, it'll self park itself. Oh, well, so you don't get towed. <laughs> right, oh, there we go. Oh my god. Okay, step out of the car. You lock it. Your car draws off. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> who says you have to step out of the car if you got bulletproof glass and uh, cold steel? Your, your car goes alcohol. home. <laughs> like, but yes, I'm, I'm the person of interest here. The right? car sees the blue blue lights and it's just like, well, we oh, got to dodge. <laughs> <laughs> what happens then? <laughs> That's a very good question. Just drive like a hundred yards past their jurisdiction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'll wait for you over here, bro. And you see that cop like at like moment it was like, I think this is a good cause to break in and uh break the glass. But if it was an Elon Musk car, I mean just despite the you know, first day review, if it is supposed to be <laughs> <laughs> if it's what he says it's all cracked up to, <laughs> right. cracked up to be an I mean, sip, I mean glass is supposed to break. Yeah. I mean, not, not break, uh, create the spider webs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it did work. Yeah. A lot of people don't think that. It's like, actually, it, the glass broke. It's supposed to not shatter. Nobody wants to see all those right. glass panel pieces. It didn't penetrate. Oh, penetrate. Right, right. 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 And come through to the, right. on the inside. So it did work in that the glass did not shatter or break. It will create spider veins, but it mm-hmm. won't, like, uh, go all the way through. It disperses the force. The force, right. right. So if the cop was doing that, uh, I was hoping that maybe... When the first car alarm came off when it was searching, mm-hmm. the, and it, when it turned off, I was hoping that you'd probably like reach in your pocket, like do your car horn along, yeah. and turn it on and activate it. <laughs> yeah, everybody wanted to know. <laughs> I let it go. It just cut off on its own after about 30 seconds. I was just like, well, I mean, you're the one breaking in the car. Let's hear that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did, then he did it again. And I was like, oh, there he goes again. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna just you know point out the fact that they're burglars and robbers and. I oh mean, man! So here's a different one. So if 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 it's difficult to do a vehicle that is hard to br- um, you can break into it, right? Like the mm-hmm. cop was trying to. Then you install like confetti flies in there when there's uh, radar sensors that senses someone's in there and glitter bombs them. Yeah. Like coming up, it goes all over. And they're like, I bet you 100% they will stop. It's like, this is too much. I think booby traps are illegal. I mean, 
I'm pretty sure they came Would They will say that that's a booby trap? Yeah, it's a booby trap for sure. Mm. Yeah. What, glitter, confetti bombs? Somebody said a fart bomb like would have been good. Just right? fart <laughs> Look, I'm a stinky guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my car, it's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's like one of those, it's like, all right, activate. I'm out of here anyways. Right. I got to stand outside of my car. <laughs> we, had, we had them in school. It was like this little glass vial and it had like sulfur or something in it and you could just... Ooh smash it and it oh my away. god wow yeah. this is like a million dollar uh, idea i mean hopefully not everyone gets pulled over but if you do that's a really good oh everybody like, gets pulled over what are you talking about or like are you yeah. if you have mace mace is legal so mm -hmm. what you can do in your car um before you step out is squeeze a little bit in your car uh and you're good to go or i guess a lot of people say just spray it on your tires or something so the dog's nose gets all messed all right. up but i don't know i mean Sounds to me that might be illegal, so I wouldn't advocate anything like that. <laughs> but if you were, that, that would mess that dog's nose up pretty bad. Some people say cinnamon, too. I don't know. There's huh. certain spices that, because dog's nose are real sensitive. But, I mean, they're already abusing their dogs enough. Like, shouldn't abuse animals, I mean, because they're doing that enough. They, those dogs have to sit in there all day. Right? You hear the dog at the beginning of the video just going nuts. Like, Well, if you want to talk about people leaving their dogs in cars, cops do it quite go. regularly. Well, they made me put my dog in the car, lock the door, right. shut him in there. And right at the end, this, you know, like the windows were up. They shut him in there. It was a cold day, but I mean. What kind of dog was it? My dog? Yeah. A German Shepherd. There you go. Nice. nice. Well. We're wrapping up here. Is there uh, any last points you wanted to bring up about your case or experience? Yeah, let's see here. So, yeah, I fought it pro se, you know, on my own. Kind of went, went and uh, went after him uh, civilly, and it worked out for me. I just like, I guess people need to know that you you don't have to take it lying down. You can actually ch charge them back, make them the defendant when they. When they uh, violate your constitutional rights and they do it under color of law, and when a reasonable officer would, if they do something that a reasonable officer knows they shouldn't do, that kind of puts you in the position to actually file these claims. But everybody should research uh, United States Code 42, Section 1983, because that's, that's the statute that allows you to uh, file a civil suit against them. Go after their money. Go after their money. And it's or not your money, because really it's taxpayer money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, it's kind of like an insurance company that I dealt with. It was like, um, so basically, like all these different counties and cities are like a collective, and they put into this pot. Shell Corporation. So when, maybe. <laughs> so when they uh, get sued, they, they pull from the pot, and there's like some agency that kind of figures out how much they should get and how much they should settle for and all that. But um, if you, you do like I did, basically what I did is I... Um, I tried to articulate my case the best as I could because it's one thing district court or criminal court like I, I know what I know what I'm doing a little bit but when it comes to like actually suing somebody you got like all these there's a lot more going on you're talking federal court you're not talking your basic hillbilly district court in Buena Vista you're talking like federal judges and federal uh, city attorneys and prosecutors and all this stuff um, well, I guess not prosecutor. They were they were the defendant. So I guess I was the prosecutor. Go me. But um, you're probably going to need a lawyer. But I'm I would like to reverse engineer what my lawyer did. Maybe figure out a way that you know there's a minor violation. Like oh they illegally reached in my pockets or something. Something that a lot of lawyers wouldn't want to take. But also something that was technically illegal. Because that's the thing is, you, it's got to be ag egregious for the lawyer to even want to take it. Just something simple like, oh, they reached in my pockets when they weren't supposed to. That could be something if people could learn how to actually pursue these things on their own. That would be a good way to go about it. And just like, all right, well, we're going to have to keep them in check. They make sure that we don't get all these frivolous, you know, reaching in pockets and stuff like that. Because, I mean, really what you're doing is you're filing a complaint. And it's you list out every fact. You list out... Um, like what they did and how they, you know, basically list out every fact and then you list out the counts. Like, all right, count one, malicious prosecution. This officer engaged in malicious prosecution against me and he, you know, he uh, searched my car as an unreasonable search and you just list out everything. And then towards the end you say damages, like how much, uh, how much were my damages and what do I deserve? And then, you know, you submit it to the court. And But I mean, at this point, I, I don't know enough to be able to like go about it and do it but it'd be a good thing for 
like the liberty community or whatever to learn is how we can actually go on the attack without a lawyer because most lawyers won't take these cases. It's 1983 cases. Like you can find lawyers that'll do like false arrests or something like that. But then you contact them and they say, oh, that's like security guards and stuff. They, they don't want to take on the government and piss them off because they work for this organization called the bar and they're on this little club and well, they don't <clears throat> it's the power of crowdsourcing it could be crowdsourced people could figure it out together yeah and you know mistakes are going to be made but eventually we'll get it all figured out yeah and i mean if, if you end up like clogging up the system then boo-hoo well, sorry <laughs> i mean as long as you don't do anything illegal enough for them to throw you in a cage like that would be great if we could come up with a way to like uh push these like what some people would say frivolous but i would say any violation of my rights is enough for me to like push back and do something about it oh well it's not that bad you didn't get beat up they didn't tase you they didn't you know they inconvenienced me i'm trying to deliver shit yeah right even if it just ended where they only uh illegally searched me and i didn't go to jail and all that their claim is they're here to protect me how is this protecting me Mm -hmm. right what was my crime who was the victim yeah Yeah, well right Commonwealth of Virginia. All right, All right. bring him to the stand. Please. <laughs> yeah. No, he actually wrote that he was the victim of the obstruction of justice. It was literally under victim. He wrote his name that he was the victim. He was getting paid by the hour. Yeah, and yeah. somehow I I victimized him. It's, it's so weird because sometimes a prosecutor would say, "Look, this cop is coming out of his own volition, coming here outside of a day to work. You know, to show that he was a victim. Like he's getting paid for this. Like mm-hmm. this, this is not like a, a special treat for him or like." Uh, laborous to go off yeah. his own time like this is like a time off for him he's right. getting paid to go to court he does it on the regular i mean right. he lies constantly i mean when i showed up to district court the uh the prosecutor that i got the body camera from, stuff from he didn't even show up i don't know if he watched the video and he was like oh, <laughs> yeah, because <it's> not- <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is uh they elected a new commonwealth attorney and he got moved to district judge so I don't know. It's that small town stuff going on. It's like, oh, well, maybe he didn't want to, before he goes into becoming a district judge, uh, try to maliciously prosecute a bullshit charge that's obvious on video. I mean. Right. Well, I think you did a good job uh, in your temperament and control of the situation and uh, s- explaining everything out succinctly in a way like you're actually saying, like, do I have consent? A lot of people think, like, Cops are like, can I your car? People are like, oh, okay. Like, nobody knows you can say, mm-hmm. no, I don't give you my consent. I think a good job also showing what you can't say. Like, am I under duress? If I'm under duress, uh, then I have no choice. I don't want to die, right? Yeah. Over, like, uh, failed registration or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, inspection. But inspection, right. Did you catch the part where uh, the lieutenant showed up to the scene? Didn't know which one it was. Well, that, and he, uh, he showed up, but he had a bad registration. He was like, uh, yeah, he's taking pictures of my registration. It's about four days out. Uh, I'm waiting for it to come back from the DMV. <laughs> so, so, and then, then Hogan was like, oh, you want me to write you too? And I'm like, wow, these guys, th- this crime, this alleged crime is just as bad as the one they're accusing me of. But I'm the one getting my car searched and all this. Nobody wanted to search an old Harrison's vehicle. He's driving around. His, that's the weird thing is like they have to register their government vehicles with the government. I don't understand that, but apparently it was four days late and he was driving a dangerous unregistered vehicle around on Could the road. Could have killed people just as well. <laughs> yeah. Could have right. easily killed somebody with that thing. And, you know, who's the person who, who is hurt by that? You, right? <laughs> then you're on the side of the road. So you have every incentive to want to have a safe, safe yeah, car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for telling us your story. Yeah. Uh, I think this is very helpful for a lot of people, especially in Liberate. I think uh, this happens to any, any, any one of us. It's good to have you on our team to kind of put together a plan then, because mm-hmm. it is good to kind of know how to respond to those kinds of incidents, but also then to kind of follow through in such a civil court case, <laughs> yeah. for example. And when? I think you did great with that. I think uh, that's a hard-won battle that you kind of came through. Yeah, I mean, it took about... 10 months maybe well yeah i'd say about two months to go to district court and then right after that i started looking for attorneys and then in the meantime we were just like you know writing up our claim and kind of like uh figuring out the monel claim i was telling you about where we we actually sued the city itself so what we did what i did is i went on and i created a facebook page called reform the buena vista police department <laughs> and i paid for a, a facebook ad like 40 dollars, <laughs> and i reached like the whole city because it was like 
<laughs> so I reached the whole city, and uh, people were like, "Yeah, they screw me over all the time." Like, this is this long thread. You should go on there and check it out. It's hilarious. And everybody's just like, "Yeah, these guys. They did all this horrible shit to me." I'm walking. I walk around town like in Lexington, which is like the sister city right up the street, and people were like. Yeah, uh, apparently Hogan arrested this, this woman, the wrong, the wrong woman, because she had a similar last name the day after my video dropped. And they were like telling me like, yeah, the same officer in your video arrested my mom and all this. I was like, what? Hell hath no scorn as a yeah. man pulled over by road pirates. <laughs> but it's just like, it's not just, I think the city, are, it's, it's a city. I mean, I wouldn't call it a city. It's like a small town, but they're, they're incorporated as a city. There's something going on there where... They uh, they actually had this this golf course that they um they were trying they wanted they funded this golf course by borrowing borrowing against their city hall building and they borrowed against their police department and they defaulted on it. Wow, and, uh, as collateral? Like yeah, the, it was the collateral. <laughs> they defaulted on it and uh, wow. they, the the loan people that gave them the loan took them to federal court and the judge ruled that it was a moral obligation and not a legal obligation so let them keep their city hall and let them keep their police department and their golf course and there's like you don't have to pay it that's a moral obligation imagine if it was the other way like you lose your police you're sorry <laughs> right. your yeah. station's gone well you have wow. the sheriff's department that's the thing <laughs> wow. the police department is only accountable to the mayor really and the sheriff you know you elect a sheriff but as when it comes to a police department there's he's only accountable to the mayor and i mean Nobody's picked this up. This is the story. I mean, it's gotten like almost 200,000 views and I haven't had the news try to contact me like, Hey, and you know, what's going on with this? And like, they don't care. They don't want to expose this. And there's a bunch of news agencies that, you know, could put it out there, but they don't care about stuff like this. And it's obvious to everybody that there's a lot of corruption going on in that city. And I hear it all the time. People always message me on that Facebook page and tell me their stories and, that's how we built up our Monell claim is we just took their stories, got investigators and put it in our complaint and it was like, hey, this kind of, you know, shows that there's a systematic issue going on here. And that kind of increased the earnings. It wasn't just uh, when you just do the officers involved, you don't you're not you're not going to get as much out of your um, claim as if you can actually show that it's a systematic issue with the city, which was really easy to do with my forty dollars in Facebook ads. <laughs> So yeah. I, they they pissed off the wrong guy, and I went out of my way to make yeah. sure. I was <laughs> so I mean, now every time somebody gets pulled over by Hogan, I'm sure they're gonna he's gonna get some shit from people. Just Good. Like, oh, I'm not asking for consent. You know, whatever, dude. Good. Well, thank you for your service, M4. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <Yeah. laughs> With that, for those listening, uh, I'm gonna put in the link into the description of uh, the video that you guys can watch. Uh, eventually we'll put out a part two to it as well and yeah keep fighting the good fight stay liberated get off my car <laughs> <laughs> intellectual and physical self defense is very important what constitution <laughs> <laughs>